guys, it's Holly. So today we're going to be taking a look at, I definitely think, one of the best LEGO Hogwarts modular sets that we've gotten. The exterior for this one is a huge step up from last year, and that is the LEGO Harry Potter Dumbledore's Office set, which is set 76402, and will retail for 80 US dollars and 130 Australian. Now, I'm not the biggest fan of this modular system. I think it works really well as a play set. I think it has a lot of customizability, which I absolutely love, but the exterior has always been a letdown. So when I saw this, I got incredibly excited. This is also one of a only a few LEGO Harry Potter sets this wave that actually have the collectible wizard chocolate frog tiles. So if you haven't yet finished them, you might get lucky with this one. There's not too many new figures compared to like a lot of the other sets in this wave, but there's still a lot on offer. So let's go and have a look at it and see if it's actually worth picking up. So here is Dumbledore's office all complete and definitely this has the best exterior of any modular Hogwarts castle we've ever gotten. It is so detailed, it is so nice. The interiors are pretty solid, I wouldn't say they're as good as the original 2021 modular Hogwarts versions. There definitely is some empty space not being utilised and it just sort of feels a tiny bit odd in some sections of the castle. But overall I think this set is pretty solid, I mean it's definitely what you sort of think of as like a classic. Lego Harry Potter set like you get a Hogwarts castle you get some professors you get some students and it does overall feel like pretty good value but I don't think it's anything too special at the same time but before we talk about it in detail let's have a look at the minifigures so first up is Harry Potter, and the main attraction to this version of him is definitely his invisibility cloak. It's the first time it showed up since the Series 1 CMF, and overall, this thing is incredibly detailed. It's a massive cloth piece that has a ton of different neck holes. Once you take that off, though, there's nothing really special about the Harry Potter minifigure at all. It's the exact same one as we got several times in sets last year, with his robes and his classic young face, so he's not that interesting, but this invisibility cloak cloak is spec I love the detail on the inside and the fact that you've sort of got the cloth look to it and then on the alternate side you have this incredibly holographic shiny fabric which looks amazing. It doesn't technically make him invisible but it certainly looks really cool and is going to be worth probably quite a lot. It's a really nice high quality fabric. Please take care of this. Next up we have young Hermione and again she's really not all that interesting. It's a torso we've seen before, her head and her hair we've seen before. She's not that special. I mean I'm glad they're bringing back the rope pieces though I do love these torsos. Up next is Professor Snape and this is the exact same version from the Hogwarts Moment set where his sort of coat is pushed out to the side so that they don't have to give you the coattails piece which is really unfortunate. I love that coattails piece and sort of that version of Snape much better than this version and I'm also kind of glad that he is in this set though because you could combine this with the Shrieking Shack set and really just sort of flesh out that whole scene from the Prisoner of Azkaban and I guess it makes sense to put him in a Chamber of Secrets movie too. Our first new minifigure though of this set is Professor Dumbledore. Again, I'm not entirely sure why we keep getting new Dumbledores. Like, I feel like we've we've had enough of them and they're all Richard Harris at this point that, like, the budget of, like, a new torso and new leg printing could go towards a new mold or a new character, for example. However, this version of Dumbledore does continue to keep that white hair, which I love on the Richard Harris Dumbledore. I think it's incredible. The torso detailing as well is really nice. Same with the legs, especially if you missed out on the Series 2 CMF version of Dumbledore. I think this is amazing. However, at this point, I feel like we could have just reused the one from Forks and we'd be fine. Like, I don't think there would be really any complaints with that. I don't think we needed a new Dumbledore. Like, with Harry Potter specifically, at this point, I would much rather, like, the new prints and new torsos and things like that all go towards characters or outfits that we've never seen before rather than another red version of Albus Dumbledore from the first two movies. Like, this isn't even, like, the Michael Gamble one. It's always Richard Harris. But again, the detailing is really nice. He looks great. It just feels like, again, a waste of budget for the set. A new minifigure though, an addition that I absolutely love, is Mrs. Norris and Filch. I think Filch's design is really good. I feel like the hair could always be a bit better, but at the moment this is really the perfect option for him. And again, this is his first appearance since 2018, so it's really good to get him back again. I love his tatty worn down clothes, and of course he comes along with a little lantern in order to yell at the students who are out of bed. 
But in order to find those students, Mrs. Norris does have to help, and I'm really glad she's included in this set. I love the patterns of her fur, I love the colouring, I love her little face print. Overall, she's amazing, and we've gotten so many cats in this wave of Lego Harry Potter. It's fantastic as well, just to have these duo in general. It's also kind of shocking that Mrs. Norris is in a Chamber of Secrets set, considering, you know, what what happens to her. But I'm, I'm glad she's here, she looks amazing, and I love these two. And lastly, we have Madame Prince, who most people told me she is the librarian. I know I've seen her a lot in the background of the Harry Potter movie, so it is quite exciting for me to get her in Lego form. I've always thought her outfit was incredibly interesting, and I love the fact that we're getting a bunch of new and sort of random Hogwarts professors each year. I think she is amazing. I love her new witch hat piece. I think that's incredible, and I would love to see them bring that back and reuse it quite often so we can mix it up a bit, especially in combination with McGonagall's witch hat. Her printing on her torso as well is amazing, same with her skirt printing. It is kind of a shame that there's no back skirt printing, but with her in particular, I really don't mind all too much. I think this figure's amazing. I also really love the head print. It's really great to get some more mature female head prints, especially with her facial expressions. I think it's going to be very useful and is a very welcome addition. So here is Dumbledore's office, and I really like the exterior from this set. I remember when I saw it for the first time, I was incredibly excited just because of how big of a step up it was from last year. Last year I feel like there was a lot of just really plain buildings, like there wasn't a lot of detail, there wasn't a lot of depth to it, and this castle certainly has depth. It's not just so one-dimensional like it was last year. And you've also got these corner pieces which can fold out, which again provide a lot of customization ability and would mean as well you can create a ton of angles which if you have a lot of these other modular pieces this is a fantastic addition and one that I would highly highly recommend just so that you can create a more dynamic layout for your Hogwarts. However, unlike the models last year, I feel like the interior isn't quite as good. I mean, I really like the bottom level, I really like the middle level, but this top level is incredibly disappointing. Now at the top as well, there is a tiny little addition that I have added on there purely for storage purposes, and those are my chocolate frog cards, as this is one of the sets that comes along with them. And this time around, I've got Helga Hufflepuff, Gilderoy Lockhart, as well as another Helga Hufflepuff. Luckily, I've got all of them, so it doesn't really matter to me. Now this set is very reminiscent and pretty much a remake of the one from 2002, which is pretty neat. However, I feel like it's got a lot more to offer this time around. So starting off, let's have a look at the bottom and take off this whole top section that exists. Now this whole bottom section is pretty much like the width of the Great Hall from the Chamber of Secrets set, and you've got these two little rooftop balcony pieces on either end, which are exactly the same and only take up four studs, sort of by the same width as every other piece. And then on the inside, you have the Hogwarts Library, which I'm really glad has finally made an appearance in Lego form. It feels like it's taken far too long to actually show up, especially considering how many scenes it's in, especially in the first two movies. The Whole thing as well can open up so you can swing out these two side sections in order to give it a bit more space to remove but more so I think it's just to make Hogwarts look a bit more interesting when you're combining all of the pieces. Now in order to sort of give it a bit more stability there's are these two poles at the front which do block off a considerable amount I guess of the play area on the inside but you kind of do need it considering how high this is built up. I just feel like if there was nothing there it would be a bit too weak. Now there are quite a lot of cool details on this bottom section, starting off with this stickered panel of the entrance to Dumbledore's office, which of course is the Griffin, where if you say Sherbet Lemon, he will let you up inside. There's a ton of really nice windows as well as this little plant structure, which if you push in this piece here and this piece here, some of the books will sort of stick out and fall out in this middle like bookshelf that you've got going on here. You can sort of see them slide around as I tip that up. Again, you've got another window on this side and just an empty archway on the left. On each side of the build there is a tiny little desk complete with two studs in order for you to stick a book on or like a cup of butterbeer or whatever you want as well as a chair for students to sit down. At the back too there's tiny little benches each complete with those little really basic lamp builds that are actually made up of like a gold tap at the back and they basically just mirror each other. However the one on the right hand side does include a little chocolate frog next to that lamp. And then like I said, you get to the middle and you have this bookshelf, so if I push those 
pieces it at the back. These books stick forward and they are actually clipped in so you can take them out. And on the inside, I mean, it's not very easy to take them out. But on the inside, there is a sticker on the cover of the book, each having something else. I imagine this first one is really meant to represent Nicholas Flamel and sort of like the Philosopher's Stone, considering you've got the giant N and the giant F there, and a bunch of random gems. The black book, however, I find really interesting is it's actually got that screaming face from like that whole library scene. I find that absolutely incredible. And I also love the fact that the head is a minifigure head. I thought that was really clever. And I absolutely love that detailing in this set. Besides that though, the bookshelf has a really basic layout just made of a bunch of like plates and jumpers and a couple of those round pieces in order to make the book stick out more. It looks really neat and overall I really like this room. Moving on up and we actually have the Dumbledore's office section of Dumbledore's office. And again, there's quite a lot on offer for here considering the size of this building. On the left hand side, you've got the sorting hat on a little stand and on the right, you have the baby little fox who has just been reborn. I think that was absolutely so cute and a really smart recoloring actually of that little baby bird piece. There's a tiny little gray platform that leads up into Dumbledore's desk, which is a really nice sticker print on the top here, complete with a quill on the the left and a little lamp on the right and then right back into the actual like window section is actually a seat for Dumbledore which alongside it has a variety of different potions which I'm taking in like pensive memories and things like that next to him and then on each side there is a bookshelf that is built in and it feels really spacious and really well done and overall I sort of get the feeling and the layout of Dumbledore's office which in this amount of space is incredible. On the outside there are these little gaps so you can sort of see through to the bookshelves and then you have a giant window in the middle which sticks out quite a bit in order for you to get Dumbledore's desk chair in there which personally I love because I just wanted to see more depth on these buildings. Heading on up to the top, you've got these two little balconies on the side here, which again are nothing too special, just a bunch of slope pieces. And on the inside is the pensive itself, and that that's it. I mean, there's a really nice window, and it's pushed very far back, but despite that, you only get one of these great pieces, so there's really not that much space for minifigures. And overall, this level, especially when compared to the second and third levels, is incredibly disappointing. There's just nothing going on here. I mean, I feel like we've had the pensive and enough times. Also the fact that there's nowhere for minifigures to actually grip on besides like four studs in the middle and a couple at the front feels like a major letdown to me. I just feel like something else could have gone here or at least you know put some studs down and just make it a bit better have the little like turning structure of all the memories even and like combine it and just add a tiny bit more rather than adding like one thing and having most of like the pieces and the detail on the outside and calling it a day. And then lastly at the very top we have these sort of Gryffindor stuck there and I am really glad that this piece has been brought back. I absolutely love that sword and it's great to get more of them and again there's really not that much going on. However considering this is a rooftop piece I'm not as disappointed as the pensive level. There's also a couple of little candles here and a nice tower build at the top but overall it feels very complete. I mean there's a lot of details on the outside again on the exterior of this section but really these top two levels interior wise is not that great. So overall I do enjoy this set and I definitely think that this is a step in the right direction when it comes to the modular Hogwarts castles. Firstly having these adjustable bits here, I've just knocked over Snape, are spectacular. The detail from the outside feels a lot more authentic and a lot better. You could display this from the inside or outside which I don't feel like was quite the same with the 2021 Hogwarts castles. I think there's a lot of potential with this and it makes me excited to see what they do with the castles. It's still not my favourite system. System, but it's definitely improving, which I really like to see. The minifigure selection is really interesting. I think if you're not planning on buying too many Lego Harry Potter sets, this is a pretty good one. I mean, you get Snape, Dumbledore, Harry, Hermione, Filch, and Mrs. Norris. Like, they appear in pretty much every single Harry Potter movie. And then Madam Prince is just a really cool figure design, and I don't think she's gonna ever appear again, maybe? So, it's really nice overall. I mean, it's definitely not my top pick out of this entire wave. I feel like just the amount of stuff that is brand new and hasn't been done before is far more appealing and far more interesting than another version of Hogwarts. Then again, if you're brand new to the theme, I think this is a fantastic option and definitely something you should consider.
The price point as well does feel pretty fair for this set, unlike a lot of the sets in this wave, and I'm overall really happy with how this turned out. I feel like this is a solid sort of like mid-tier when it comes to looking at the wave overall. I definitely think it is worth considering and picking up, especially if you do enjoy those Hogwarts Castle builds or you want something to like modify and mock overall. Otherwise, I if you just sort of are happy with all of your Hogwarts Castles, you could pass this at the end of the day. But let me know what you think about this set overall and if you plan on picking it up. And if you enjoyed this video, please give me a thumbs up and consider subscribing to my channel down below. And until next time, guys, I'll see you later.